And now it's time to understand the most important concept in any programming language, and maybe C, C++, Java, or Kotlin. The thing is how to take input from user. In fact, I have not taken this exam for a long time, and then I got some comments, you know, where is the video for how to take input from user? And here we go. Now, taking input from user is actually very, very difficult in Kotlin. You have to write 10 lines of code to get the input. Uh, that's, not the, that's not the case, right? This is one of the easiest language. So, but then before going to, I mean, before knowing how to take the input from the user in Kotlin, what we'll do is let's try to understand how you used to do it in Java. Now in Java, we have a concept of a scanner class. If you remember, we used to take input, input using scanner class and then we also had a class called as buffered reader. So these are the two classes we used to use, right, to take input. Uh, and we all used to hate buffered reader because if you remember, if you want to take input using buffered reader, you have to write a full line which goes something like this. Again, this, would, this code will not work in Kotlin because I'm writing Java code here. So it says buffer reader br equal to new buffer reader and then in that bracket you have to mention new input stream reader and then you have to mention system.in, right? Such a big line and I always used to hate it. I also used to hate scanner class. I mean for multiple, multiple reasons, you know. See, we are all coming from C background, right? In C, we have scanf, right? It's straightforward. We can use scanf and your job is done. In C++, we have C in, job is done. In Java, we are not using something very simple. You know what I feel in Java also, if I open a Java code here, I feel, you know, if you want to take input from user, so it should say int i equal to system dot in dot read. Okay, there should be something like this. And what if I say it does work? This read method will give you the data. Again, it, it, it might throw an exception, you have to handle that, but then this will give you the data. The problem is this read method in Java returns only one character. And we don't want that. We wanted the exact sentence, right? Again, if you to know more about this, you can watch my Java video, but this is not important here. The important is, in Java, we have to use a concept of scanner class or buffer reader. So can we use that thing in Kotlin? Let's try. So I will say uh, var, I will create object of scanner here, and I, I know now, I mean, you might be knowing about scanner now, right? How to create object in Kotlin. And we can say scanner, but the problem is we have to import the package for that, and we have done that already. Now what else we need here? So we have to mention uh, the object of system.in. So you have to say system.in. Uh, okay, now you will get an error and I hope you know this thing because we have seen this in the earlier videos, right? Uh, in is a keyword, so we cannot use that directly. We have to use a backtick. So you have to use a backtick to escape that character. Now once we got, uh, once we got an ob our object, let's say we got var a number equal to sc dot next int right our job is done so when you say next int, you will get a string and then we can print this string here we can print now one and that's it if i run this code let's right click and say run uh, your first code and here we go we got oh where's the output oh okay it is waiting for the input first of all i was a 78 and you got 78 right it's that easy to take input so here i'm taking the input i'm just printing it okay i'm not doing any extra, extra operation here but then you can try it out so this is what you use, you do, you take input in Kotlin, but with the help of Java syntax. But don't you think this is again, a, this is again a lengthy code, there should be something simple. And yes, we do have simple thing. Example, if I say var num1, instead of doing all the circles here, Kotlin says, hey, just read, just use read line and your job is done. So if you want to take input from user in Kotlin, just say read line and your job is done. So let's say print ln and if I print num1 here, okay, num1. And let me just remove all this extra thing. We don't need that now, right? And if I run this code, uh, let's see if it is working. And it's waiting for the input. Let's say 99 and you got 99. It's that simple, right? So if you want to take input from user in Kotlin, just use read line and your job is done. You don't have to write all this extra code here, right? No, no need of scanner now, no need of any other thing. But then question arises: what is happening be behind the scene? So if I click on read line, uh, you can see read line is using a inline function which is system.in.readline and if i jump to this read line uh okay and it is using buffered reader so can you see that indirectly it is using buffered reader so if you're thinking hey uh no need of no need to know no need to know about uh, scanner and buffered reader but hold on behind the scene kotlin is using java code right so even if you're not using buffered reader in the code in behind the scene, you are using buffer reader. So buffer reader is going, not going anywhere, right? So that's it. Uh, that's how you take input from the user. As a programmer of Kotlin, you should know only this part. 
but to, it's better to know the backend scene also right so that's it from this video guys that's how you can you can take the input from the user so i hope you liked this video click on the like button and do share this video with your friends thank you so much for watching